Tov. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. There's some interesting things going on with Russia. Of course, as we mentioned to you on the last news broadcast there, Russia had been slowly but surely building its, uh, excuse me, Iran had been building its ground forces closer to Israel. But Russia as well is beeping up its military on every border there is, including the Arctic. In an article with uh, uh, TASS news agency out of Russia, it says here on February 25th, a wide range of threats and challenges to Russia's security is emerging lately in the country's Arctic zone. Russian Defense Minister Sergei so uh, Soigu told the ministry's board meeting on Wednesday, uh, <clears throat> to counter the threats, the defense ministry should focus on developing military infrastructure in the area. Soyga said late in 2014, the Joint Strategic Command was formed on the basis of the Northern Fleet. Uh, he said, adding that the defense ministry would build up troops in uh, Kukta, Kukta Peninsula to guarantee the Northern Sea Route safety. Military troops deployment in uh, Kukta will make it possible to enhance safety of the Northern Sea routes traffic and respond timely to potential military threats in the area. Uh, the minister said in 2014, the aerospace defense brigades within the Eastern Command were reorganized air defense divisions as well as radiation, chemical, and biological defense regiments were formed. Radio, radio, uh, radio location and air direct centers deployed at the Wrangell Island and Schmidt Peninsula have been operational since October of 2014. 2014, the Eastern Command received cutting-edge weapons, including next-generation SU-30CV and SU-35 fighter aircrafts, as well as the Ka-52 combat helicopter, uh, ball coastal missile systems, and Russia submarines on new projects also performed drills in the Arctic, he said. Uh, it, it's interesting to see how these things are going. Russia is definitely preparing, uh, no telling you exactly what they definitely have in mind, but according to Israel National News, there, there are issues on, on, that they're reporting for, uh, out of NATO because recently Israel actually reconfigured uh, the cockpits of the MiG-29s that the Polish uh, military had, four of their MiG-29 fighters. They put new advanced technology in these fighters for them to be able to better uh, defend themselves against any attack that would come from any other nation. And of course, NATO is very much concerned about the tactics that Russia is doing uh, because Russia does not plan any flights that it does, does not log any flights. They just unexpectedly do the flights. And of course, it's keeping NATO scrambled at all times. Uh, it is the Polish and the Italian air forces that are mainly involved in this. But uh, in, in an article on Israel's national news, some of the high points on this said, these, uh, said the hosting of journalists by the LTU Air Force, uh, implicable and something that even uh, though their air force may not be leading combat air force, when it comes to the PR, it is apparent that they easily supersede most air forces in the world. The PR section has coordinated interviews with crew <coughs> uh, forces, uh, excuse me, members from both nations participating as well as coordinating a very complex media flight on patrol in, in Baltic skies involving three air forces simultaneously. The professionalism shown in coordinating this event is something other air forces around the world can only be jealous of. We start off uh, with the Italian side of the base and their state-of-the-art European-built Typhoons. These are some very advanced aircraft there. These aircraft have trained in Israel in the past and are considered Italy's most advanced piece of aviation hardware. Before we can uh, board the bus, we hear the roaring of jets and we will soon find out uh, that the Italians were altered and scrambled to intercept an unidentified aircraft victoring towards the Baltic airspace. As it turned out, it was a Russian cargo plane flying uh, to the Russian enclave of uh, Kaliningrad. When inquiring the nature of the intercept, we learned the following. Russian aircraft fl flying in Kaliningrad rarely, if ever, fly a flight plan, and this causes every flight on the route between the mainland of Russia and Kaliningrad to become an unidentified flight, even if its sole purpose is to deliver supplies, as opposed to electronic intelligence aircraft, which often probe NATO defenses as well. 
the Russians used this tactic to try to both wear out the forces on call as well as cause them to become complacent. And that, of course, certainly is something that, given enough time, it would certainly catch the NATO forces off guard if Russia ever does decide to make any advance. The article goes on to say that Russia is, or excuse me, that the, uh, the NATO allies are very concerned about the situation in Ukraine and the outcome of this particular fight there, the unrest that is happening in, in, in Ukraine, whether or not the, the uh, independent uh, uh, government there in the Donetsk region will actually overcome and conquer the country or the country will be divided, or whether or not Russia will end up getting uh, Ukraine under its complete c control once again. And this is concern for other countries such as Lithuania, Romania, that are also bordering Russia's borders and what the outcome might be for them in the very near future. It is a lot of unrest and uncertainty, to say the very least, as well in the Middle East with the NATO forces there uh, pounding targets for ISIS throughout uh, Iraq, Syria, and, and those, those particular areas there. It, we are definitely seeing a global change at a very rapid pace. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.